Is it possible to change and grow beyond narcissism and patterns of emotional abuse? Complicated question, for sure. Complicated. I'm going to give you some answers to that. I'm Dr. David Hawkins, director of the Marriage Recovery Center and the Emotional Abuse Institute. Is it possible to change and grow beyond narcissism and patterns of emotional abuse? Well, let's talk, first of all, about what treatment must consist of. And I've talked about these issues in other videos, but I want to again hit the highlights of five different areas that must be addressed in issue specific counseling. Now, what's issue specific specific counseling? It's different than general counseling. General counseling, you walk in and you talk to a therapist, you talk to a counselor, psychologist, someone, and they ask you, what would you like to talk about? And you talk about what you would like to talk about. Not so in issue specific counseling. Directed counseling, which is what needs to happen with treatment of narcissism and emotional abuse. And so with a very directive therapist, you, anyone struggling with narcissism and emotional abuse, should really dive deep on these five areas. First area, attitudes of superiority and arrogance. Without fail, when I do an assessment on an individual deemed by someone to be narcissistic or emotionally abusive, I find attitudes of arrogance and superiority. Always. It's a mindset. It's a way of looking at the world. I'm better than you. Just a cut above. And of course, if an individual believes that they are better than you, you're going to be put down, diminished, devalued, dismissed. So issue-specific counseling must address underlying attitudes of arrogance and superiority. Counseling must also address patterns of emotional immaturity. I, I've written a lot about how narcissistic individuals are childlike. They're childlike. They're emotionally underdeveloped. Now, we expect a child to be emotionally underdeveloped. We don't expect an adult to be emotionally underdeveloped, but they are. And they are in the ways that they deal with emotions, the way they uh, deal with relationships, the way they deal with their own inner struggles. And so this must be addressed in issue-specific counseling. The third issue that must be addressed are pervasive patterns of self-protection. Pervasive patterns of self-protection. You experience them as this individual's defensiveness, minimization, rationalization, justification, excuse-making, playing the victim, blame-shifting, gaslighting, all of those mechanisms and efforts that this individual uses to not feel healthy shame and vulnerability. So you see this puffed up, angry, defensive, self-protective individual, and those patterns must be addressed in issue-specific counseling. Because defenses protect an individual, and they also keep that person hopelessly stuck. Issue number four. In issue-specific counseling, lack of empathy must be addressed. Thankfully, empathy is a skill that can be learned. And so, with appropriate counseling, this skill can be learned. 
but it must be addressed in counseling. And the last issue, point number five, the lack of dedication to change. This must be addressed again and again and again and again. This counseling is difficult, it's challenging, it's arduous. And so the, the therapist that's really skilled at dealing with these issues will sit with a person for a significant period of time and look at these five points. Attitudes of arrogance and superiority, patterns of emotional immaturity, patterns of self-protection, lack of empathy, and lack of dedication to really change. All of that must be addressed by the very skilled therapist who deals with these issues in directed counseling. All right, I hope that's been helpful to you. Love to get feedback from you and hear what you think about these ideas. Take care and God bless.